exposing Jezebel. Jezebel loves to elevate self. If you remove the importance and power of the ministry of the cross unto the death of self in the repentant life of the believer and pursuer of truth, then antichrist religious demons enters the gatherings of ignorant people and a counterfeit version of Christ's gospel becomes the result and the flesh of carnal men will be exalted as they start to use the name, the fame and the glory of God spoken of in the Bible to exalt and elevate themselves in their congregations. The nature and the principle of pride, pride takes the glory that does not belong to it. And I've encountered this spirit for many years, for decades. And I've met her face to face. She's a shapeshifter, water spirit. I've seen her as the black witch queen, witch of witch, a queen of witchcraft that she is. I've seen her in a manifesting as a, in a, form of an octopus and uh, it's most definitely a woman and the principle by which spirits in the Bible is identified the Lord showed, showed me you study the attitude attitudes and the character and the nature and the life of that person through which they work And operate. The power and the ministry of the cross by the working of the Spirit strips man of himself and seek only to glorify and exalt God within earthen vessels. Humility does not parade itself. Second Corinthians 4 6 For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And many become misled by the spirit of Jezebel, because she is the harlot, the Lord said to me, that comes to lie within the bosom of every man, and seek to entice us and lead us astray through our fleshly desires by placing the focus on self and our fleshly lusts. The Lord said to me that our flesh is the bed of Jezebel. Such people can be very religious and quote many scriptures, but they use the Bible to make a name for themselves. These ministries are not of God and can be clearly and easily discerned by those who walk humbly with their God. Because pride blinds people. They seek to enrich themselves through the abuse of the Bible and are prosperity-orientated prosperity and know not the way of the cross. Nothing wrong with prosperity. There is a balance to everything. <clears throat> but it must, must be understood in the context of Scripture. Many use the name and the fame of Christ to enrich themselves by manipulating and twisting the Scripture through false doctrine. And many people forgot the warning in James 3, my brethren, be not many teachers, knowing that we shall receive the severer judgment. And I can testify of this. Jesus said to me years ago, I called you to teach because you need to learn. Feed my lambs. And I've paid a price for the anointing. Through a completely laid down life. It's not fun and games. You're dealing with the glory of God and the souls of his people. 
The Jezebel spirit is a lying spirit and loves to corrupt and distort the real meaning of the scriptures for its own purposes. It boosts its own agendas and will abuse the Bible to mislead, bewitch, control and intimidate its blind followers. Jezebel loves to use flatteries to infiltrate a person's life. Many false prophecies are also the result of the Jezebel spirit. Revelations 2.20 Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Jezebel uses, to sat, uh, uses seduction to satisfy self and entices men through her own corrupted through their own corrupted minds and hearts to create doctrines contrary to the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. Jezebel is a fleshly, carnal, wicked whore and likes to intellectualize everything. It is not teachable and when exposed and confronted loves to intimidate with an effort to drive into submission. Such people are used by the enemy to sow seeds of division and discord among God's children. They like to belittle others to elevate themselves. They are gossips and two-faced. Jezebel's spirit thrives on human em emotion and loves to manipulate situations and people to boost its own intentions and selfish ways. They love to, in a psychopathic way, accuse others of what they themselves are guilty of and are delusional in their thinking. People influenced by the Jezebel spirit can be very stubborn because they worship and elevate their own will and desires above being obedient and submissive to God. And they're not teachable. We they walk around with a know-it-all mentality. They love to force themselves on their victims and control is a strong characteristic in such people. Emotional outbursts and tantrums are common when they don't get their way. Jezebel likes to play mind games with an effort to cause deception and confusion. Such people can also be very vengeful and vicious when they don't get their own way. Where rebellion operates, Jezebel flourishes. Watch for those that love to be the center of attention and attraction to make a name for themselves. You know, it's like all these people boasting selfies on, on, on social media all the way. And, it's, uh, and, I, and I've watched them. They, then they, they connect Bible scriptures in a religious way to their, to their uh, um, um, parading of self in the public, seeking intention and praise of self. Humility doesn't parade itself. This is why the Lord has personally t taught me to stay hidden. A person who has been stripped of self loves to stay hidden and only desires to exalt Jesus and not self. I want to read to you a pr prophetic utterance spoken by the Holy Spirit through J. Leland Dolls about the Jezebel spirit. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you suffer that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. That which was the doctrine of Balaam during the Pergamos area, Pergamos area era, became in the Tatara period of the church. The seducing tactics of that woman Jezebel. Jezebel was the wife of the wicked king Ahab during the days that Israel had almost completely abandoned the faith of their fathers. She was the daughter of a foreign king who brought an alien religion into Israel and because of the weakness of Ahab, she dominated the religious life of the nation, destroying the true prophets of God and establishing the prophets of Baal and Asherah. 
This is the typical picture I chose in order to portray the religious condition of the Thyatira period, commonly referred to as the Middle Ages, the inception of which was in the years of growing papal power. Papal power. The word I spoke declares that Jezebel seduced my servants to commit fornication. Symbolically, this Jezebel is one and the same as the great whore described in the seventh chapter of Revelation, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. This fornication has to do with the illicit relationship of church and state. Primarily, however, it relates also to the unholy union of church and man-made organizations which purport to speak for me. It is the church turning to the arm of the flesh for its sustenance and propagating power. This mother of all it is symbolic of false religion, that which is alien to the true spirit of Christ. She has filled the earth with, abom with her abominations, and the inhabitants of the earth are drunk with the wine of her fornication. And God has shown me some of these big name prosperity preachers in, in, in the in the realm of the spirit, now they stand bewitched by this Jezebel spirit because they feed at the table, the table of fleshly indulgence through greed. This woman has plied a trade for many centuries, even before the Christian era began. She's pictured as sitting upon many waters or peoples, and also upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. From the overall historical perspective, the seven heads are seven major nations or empires which have been or will be influenced by this woman. They are Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, both pagan and Christian, including those nations which have apostatized into communism raking upon the heads the name of blasphemy and the coming world government of the false prophet which must continue for a short time. The woman of false religion will continue to hold sway in the coming era of the seventh head for the corrupt religious systems both Catholic and Protestant will enter into league with it. And this, is, this was prophesied but over 40 years ago, and I have seen the meeting of the upper state churches years ago, the, the prosperity preachers, and the priest, in fulfillment of this prophecy, and, and, and the priest that organized that meeting was judged, and he died a gruesome death, on a, he had a motorbike accident. So like the Lord says, this woman of false religion will continue to hold sway in the coming era of the seventh head for the corrupt religious systems, both Catholic and Protestant, will enter into league with it. The sixth head, which ruled in the Apostle John's day, has continued until this day as its hereditary power has continued through Christendom, even th though apostate <clears throat> and blasphemous. Historically, the woman, which is the priestcraft of false religion, has affected the affairs of the nations directly through the close relationship of government and <clears throat> an officially supported priesthood. And it must be known that this is the Spirit of God speaking. This is not some man's ideas. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit speaks here in the first person. The priesthood has helped the ruling forces to maintain their power and control by keeping the masses of people in subject, subjection through fear and supposed Paternalistic favor. 
Thus the woman is supported or carried by the beast through an official working relationship between religion and state. In those former Christian nations which have taken upon their heads the name of blasphemy, however, there is a different relationship between the woman and the beast. <clears throat> The woman is responsible for the coming into being of much Marxist dictatorships by fostering conditions leading to a severe reaction against a corrupt system which prevailed through a fornication. Thus, thus false religion actually is responsible for spawning communism. It is her offspring. <clears throat> and because she has spawned it, she will be judged by it. This is portrayed in a <clears throat> prophetic picture by the following. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these shall hate the whore, and make, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat the flesh and burn her with fire. The ten horns are ten nations which will be completely taken over by the Marxist elements and become an integral part of the sea beast of communism. <laughs> They shall then turn on the religious systems and decimate them, both Catholic and Protestant. This will include the very stronghold of the Roman Church system in Italy, the Vatican. Think not that only the Catholic branches of apostate Christianity will feel the wrath of the beast. The holy daughters of the Protestant fold will also be greatly affected. In the letter to Tyre, I gave this warning concerning Jezebel. Behold, I will cast thee into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. It will be during the great tribulation that the great whore will be decimated by the communist powers, which corresponds to the dogs that ate Jezebel, after she was cast down and trodden underfoot. <clears throat> I have given her much opportunity to repent of her fornication, but she has refused. Therefore I will kill her children with death, her offspring, and all the churches shall know that I am you searches the reins and the hearts, and I will give to every one of you according to your works. My people, the time draws near when all of these things shall take place. Therefore consider what I speak to thee, for even now you are being tried, and even now am I searching your heart. <clears throat> and to you I say, as I did to certain ones in Thyatira, as and as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put on you none other burden but that which you have already old fast till I come. Then the Holy Spirit, well, the Lord Jesus, Yeshua spoke the following to Charles Newbolt about this same spirit. Can you not see, my son, how the carnal mind has devised his own plan with all its traditions and labeled the church? For generations men thought this was of me and for me, but it is not so. This is the harlot, the woman who sits on many waters, who pretends allegiance to me, but she is widowed, she is not my bride. Her deception is great. She has attained for herself the riches of the world. She has lavished herself with fine buildings and calls them temples and cathedrals and synagogues and churches. She has dressed herself in the royal robes which, we, which she wove by her own hands. He's talking about the holy churches. The linen I give is righteousness which has been purchased by my blood. She has accrued great riches with bank accounts and investments and have men bound to her by these things. She has purchased these things by the blood of the martyrs. 
Everywhere you look, you can see the harlot. She's everywhere in men's hearts. Men go after her, and she loved it so. She's not married, but has taken unto herself many lovers. She's defiled, and those who sleep with her are defiled. Mercy and peace are with those who have eyes to see and ears to hear when the trumpet sounds and the call goes forth, come out of her, my people, come out. The road to Zion is paved with humility. Lord, I cried, it's so hard to say. Why is it so hard for me to say it plainly? Why is it so hard for you to say plainly? He answered, because the deception is so great. Christianity is a religion, and religious men are caught in its web. Who can hear me, said the Lord? Who can hear my prophets when it is said of Christianity that it, as a religious system, is a false religion? Who can understand when I declare that all religion is false? <clears throat> the greatest deception of all is for men to come to it in my name, thinking they have come to me. I am not an it. I am not a religion. I am the living and true God. I require that men come unto me and renounce, renounce all religion. But who can hear? Religion has boundaries. I am boundless. It has laws and rules and regulations. I offer grace and love and peace. Religion binds men. I free them. Religion suppresses men. I call them to ascend into the heavenlies. Religion restrains and controls. I release. Religion requires obedience to it. I require obedience to me. Yes, obedience is far better than sacrifices. I loathe religion and religious men. They are dangerous and spread the deception to innocent hearts. Lord, you have spoken plainly. So where shall they go who come out of Babylon? This is false religion. And he, and he answered simply to Jesus. Ascend, my holy ones, ascend into the heavenlies. Sit at my right hand and at my left. I will show you mis mysteries. I will show you great and glorious things. You are my witnesses, my two witnesses, one on my left and the other on my right. On my left is grace and mercy and peace. On my right is righteousness, justice, and wrath. I am a two-edged sword. My sword <clears throat> goes forth out of my mouth. It divides the righteous from the unrighteous. It is sharp and quick and sure. Behold, I am dividing right from wrong. I am making straight the path. I am exalting valleys. I am moving mountains. The high will be made low and the low will be made high. If he cannot understand this, the man of sin, let him go down into his house, shut his door, weep and mourn, for surely pity shall come upon his house. How shall they come out of Babylon? I ask the Lord. They shall come out by coming unto me. Simply leave the doors open, the ways made clear. The prophets, is, the prophets have gone before. Do not look back. Do not go back. Simply leave. And me as a kingdom forerunner, I can testify through this. He's God has taken me through the religious systems of men. He's taken me out. He's actually sent a, a, a complete stranger. I wonder if that was not an angel years ago that just walked up to me and said to me, God is taking you out of the church. And I've never seen that person again. This came up to me out of the blue. And me and the Lord has been, the Father and the Holy Spirit have been affecting nations <clears throat> and families, exploits, street evangelism, signs and wonders, teaching, running international supernatural ministry on various platforms. Because God is new, doing a new thing in the earth through the gathering of the saints. And in these end times, you will gather those who respond to the call to come out 
from the witchcraft of man's religious systems. Those who are led by the Spirit of God and they shall be used mightily by the Lord to do kingdom exploits because it's why God says in the, in the last verse of Hosea 2, I will sow it for myself into the earth, Jezreel, which means God sows. And through the latter rain outpouring of the glory of the latter house, like the Lord declares in Zechariah 10, verse 9, and I will sow them, sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and return again. So the fulfillment of the Great Commission. And when they criticize you, the Lord says, and call you blasphemous names, let your head be as flint, like Jesus was in his day, for, to fulfill the calling and the destiny that the Father was, has placed upon his life. He says in Romans 8, those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. No one controls them. It's like the Father said to me years ago, many will try and attempt to give you a position with them, but you stand neutral so that you can move under the sovereign will of the Father, exactly like Jesus, because the, son of, the sons of God are coming forth. And they criticize you, be silent, be at peace, love them, turn the other cheek, for, they, for so they persecuted your fathers before you. Do not look back, do not do anything, do not say anything, simply leave. Say in your heart, I've left Babylon and I've ascended the high hill of my God. Psalm 24, who may ascend the mountain of God, who may stand in the tabernacle of the Holy One. I have come to Mount Zion, to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. You cannot take Zion down to Babylon, you have to come out of her. You cannot sing Zion's songs in Babylon. The major difference between religious people with a cathedral mentality and kingdom people are led by the Spirit of God who dwells in Zion. <clears throat> Zion is a place in the Spirit where Jesus is the only thing there is. Lord, my question seems endless. This kind of freedom, this independence, this liberty, will it not be a great threat to those who lead in Babylon? Oh yes, my son, they will take great offense at my holy ones. They will say you are deceived. They will slander, accuse, and defame you. They would plot to kill you if they could. For you, my holy ones, have become what they cannot, because they cannot let go of what they have. Yet it shall be very soon be taken from them anyway. Tell me, Lord, in view of all of this, have we really heard the gospel yet? What is the gospel? Speak plainly to us. The gospel has been twisted and perverted to fit the molds of traditions and religions so uniquely so that men confuse the Christ with their systems and join converts to them rather than him. Because the churches of men is not the pattern. Christ is the only pattern. We are called to walk as Jesus walked. I called to the true apostolic prophetic ministry to raise up sons after the order and similitude of Christ, not church clones, with the, to walk around with a cathedral mentality that lives during the week like complete strangers to God while they pay him a visit in a church building on a Sunday, once a week. And then the Lord said to him, But the truth of the gospel is this, that I, the Lord God of Israel, came in human flesh, fulfilled the law and the prophets, shed my blood of righteousness, arose from the grave, ascended into the heaven, where I sit at the right hand of God the Father, where I intercede on behalf of the saints, and through faith I am gathering unto myself and my assembly of holy ones. <clears throat> The Ecclesia are called out once. They are gathered into me. They are my general assembly 
of the firstborn. I have birthed them by my spirit. I have filled them with my spirit. I lead them by my spirit. They are one in faith, hope, spirit, and love. They are everywhere in worship, in spirit, and in truth. In obedience, they serve me where they are, out of who they are in me. And none of this has anything to do with that thing men call church. Thou are my body, my temple, my only ones, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. They are above institutional, institutionalism, beyond doctrines, creeds, and rituals. They are not religious, they are sanctified. This is the good news, that Jesus is Lord, and whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. Lord, I know of young pastors, spiritful, to love you and who want to go on with you. What shall they do once they see these things? <clears throat> no man having put his hand to the plough and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Again, I plead with you, Lord, speak plainly. And he said, you seize these things and obeys my word will simply come out. You will leave home and family and friends and come out. It is a hard word. Who can hear? These are they who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Revelations 14.4 4. This is the true bride. Lord, who shall do? What shall I do with this word? Shout it from the housetops. Proclaim it to the nations. What has been revealed to you in secret? Proclaim it in the open. Be bold. Be fortified. Be strong. Speak it boldly. Shock the nations. Rattle their doors. Shake their foundations. If they cannot stand, they are not of me. If it can be shut down and closed up, it is not of me. If it can be tossed by the wind, it is not of me. If it produces anger and violence and malicious gossip and slanderings and lies from those who hear it, they are not of me. For such things do not come out of me. Behold, I have laid my foundation, I have built my walls. And now I am dropping my plumb line. My word of truth goes forth. That which does not align with my word will be torn down and cast into the sea. I'm sending my prophets again. They go out in the spirit of Elijah, preaching the kingdom of God and calling men everywhere to repent and be immersed into Jesus. They are my John the Baptist. They go forth to prepare the way of the Lord. And I've been walking in this for many years with God. Shall I return to where the harlot? Oh, how, I, how, how repulsive that is to me. Nor shall I take unto myself those who are joined to her. Search your heart, my people. Babylon is in the heart. Come out of her, and she will come out of you. Zion likewise is in the heart. Come unto me, and I will become your only love. Arise and shine, come unto me. Lord, I pray, forgive me for the fear and the intimidation I feel when I think about speaking these things out. You shall know the harlot by this as well, that she has such a powerful control over the hearts and minds of men that they are laden with fear to dare Come out of her, let alone speak against her. She is the epitome of idolatry and full of idolatry and all those joined to her idolaters. These be religious people who worship their churches and their, their preachers, their pastors. It's like the Lord said to me years ago when I he gave me a book to write. He said to me that the majority of my people are in relationship with the churches and the guy behind the pulpit very few in relationship with me, the head of the church. That's why they are so easily misled through false doctrines. Now you must realize, my son, that the thing is an idol when men have put their hearts, have put their trust and love in it. <clears throat> An idolater do not want their idols touched. It is a dangerous thing to touch another man's idol. As you speak these things, you will be pulled, you will be pulling down strongholds and shattering idols, and you will be hated by many for my name's sake. Now the harlot, the mother of harlots, is the spirit of Satan himself. 
He has hidden behind the skirt and deceived the nations. He is last of all willing for her to be exposed. He is indeed the great dragon and will try to consume my bond servants, those I am sending forth in my name to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and to expose the harlot and the counterfeits. A fierce war has begun in the heavenlies. All hell is loosed to destroy my bond servants if they could, but they cannot even so much as touch them because they are dead and hidden in me. In other words, they walk the way of the cross. This is why the fear is so compelling. It is real. Nevertheless, my bond servants will indeed follow me wherever I go at all costs to their own lives. Why is it so hard to leave Babylon? Why can't Christian people just walk away from it? The Lord said, The spirits of Babylon are numerous and very compelling. At the head of the system is the mother of all, it's Jezebel. She is disguised as the bride, and thereby has deceived the best of hearts. Yet she is an enticing spirit. Her seductive ways appeal to the flesh of men and their desire for power, position, and riches. Working under her are all the Ahabs, the kings and the rulers in the churches, spirits operating through prideful men. The Ahabs are the Nicolaitans, the conquerors of the people. They are the clergy system that elevates itself above the people. Working for them are such other demons as pride, haughtiness, control, position, authority, power, possessiveness, domination, ownership and jealousy. This is all second heaven false, div- false uh, dominion. It operates through the flesh. The true sons of God operates from the throne, the third heavens. That's why God shows us these things in deceptions to expose. When Jesus said, these spirits rule the churches, the systems, and the people under them. They rule through spirits of fear and intimidation. Cooperating with these are spirits of tradition, dogmatism, sectarianism, doctrine, sentimental sentimentalism, dominationalism, the warring spirits are confusion, hatred, division, divisiveness, bitterness, and the like. These have holds on men and are strongholds in the minds of men, but at the root of them are all these despicable spirits of religion. For men to come out, they must first understand these things, then they must repent of them and come unto me with a pure heart. I will deliver them. I will separate them and cleanse their defiled hearts. I will dress them in readiness and prepare them for my banqueting table. I will feed them the good father of my word instead of the indigestible twigs of men's mind. Who can digest the human intellect? Who can swallow its lies and deceits? The answer is everyone, for man is stupid and devoid of knowledge. But he who has my spirit will hunger and thirst after me, and I will reveal my nature to him. He will come unto me, and I will sup with him, and he with me. And he is the one who can come out of the harlot. Because if you have a true revelation of Jesus Christ, who the Lord is, the word of God, the head of his true body, those who operate in subjection to him, then he opens your eyes of discernment to see these things. You have to humble yourself in the presence of God. And then the Lord said, the person who humbles himself is the one who will come out of the harlot, for I shall lose none of whom the Father has given me, none except the son of perdition. It's the principle of the man of sin. It's the antichrist spirit at work. The harlot is everywhere. She's in a ministry seeking to promote herself in power, position, and riches. She's in the ministers, the Ahabs, the Nicolaitans. She plays politics to promote herself. She lies, cheats, defrauds. She will do anything to get ahead. She is full of ambition and selfish desires. She is an abomination to me, the very opposite of my nature and of the nature of my true bride. 
because the true bride that becomes his habitation, his indwelling, his true temple, reflects his nature, his image, his character and his likeness. This, my son, is why I say a woman is to be quiet and gentle and submissive, for she bears the joy of the bride in her heart. She loves her lover. The harlot loves herself. The bride gives of herself. The harlot takes unto herself. The bride hides herself in hiddenness. The harlot exposes herself even in a doorway. She advertises herself and entices men to come into her. Be joined to her for the pleasures of the flesh. Self is flesh. Anything for self is flesh. This is why it is an, the abomination that makes desolate my holy place. Because we call to be the temple of God. My holy place is the spirit of men. When that spirit is defiled by the flesh, that is an abomination to me. The harlot is the flesh nature of man that has taken its rule in the church's self-aggrandizement, men seeking to increase themselves in flocks. They count numbers and glory in them. They own their own sheep and call them mine. They lie, for they are not my sheep. They make disciples unto themselves, of themselves and for themselves. They fleece their flocks for their own sordid gain. These are not my ministers, they are the hirelings, the Nicolaitans. The harlot is ugly and hides herself in gaudy garments and decorates her face in lavishing colors. She hides behind these things, she is ashamed of her sin. Yet she will not repent, she cannot repent, she is evil from within. What about the harlot, Lord? Who or what is the harlot spirit? How can we know when she is operating? The harlot spirit, my son, is anything for self. She is an abomination that makes desolate my holy place. In other words, she takes the false religion, the spirit of Antichrist, she usurper that takes the place of Christ in his own temple. This is why the Lord says, Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. So that God can empty the bride of self, that he can enter his temple, an habitation which we are. My bride, my holy bride, is robed in righteousness. She has eyes only for me. She is given only to me. She is pure, undefiled, and seeks nothing for herself. She is the lay-down life. She denies herself of self, takes up a cross, and follows me daily. My bride is beautiful and shines in the innocence of her holiness. She is separated unto me. She is joined to me. I am her husband and she is my only true love. I have birthed her. I have given a sup. I have ordained her in righteousness, beauty and holiness. And this comes through the Hebrew 12 discipline of the Father. I can testify of these things. I've come through this exact same order in my walk with God. <clears throat> then Jesus says, My bride is hard to see in the world because she is quiet, unassuming, gentle, meek. She is hidden in me. But the harlot, she is loud and boisterous. She seeks herself. She wishes to expand her own bosom with the wealth of the nations. She seeks self in everything and and everything she does is for self. She has painted the face with all manner of atrocities. She loathes the bride, for she has no husband. She is a harlot. She takes anyone or anything into her bosom if it brings about an increase to her. She is an abomination to me because she is full of boasting. She is deceitful. She is carnal. She is a harlot. The harlot is untrue. She is the counterfeit. Men come to her seeking self, self-aggrandizement, self-reliance, self-pity, self-strength, self-anything, self, 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 me, myself, and I. This, my son, is how you can know if the harlot is at work. Ask yourself, is what I am about to do, or is what I am about to do, or is 
what I am discerning has to do with self. <clears throat> am I seeking self or am I seeking the good of others? It is self. It is the whole at every time. If it is from me, says the Lord, it will be for others. It will be the lay down life of agape. She is a deceiver. She holds out all sorts of promises. She promises life and joy and prosperity and peace. And in return, she charges a price. She cannot offer these things for, in fact, those who go into her go down into Sheol. They go down into death, into poverty, into despair, into bondage and anguish. Ah, oh, she cannot offer these things. Only I can offer life, joy and peace and blessing and happiness. These are found in me. The harlot says, take unto yourself what is yours. I say, lay it down. She says, live to drink and be merry. I say, weep and mourn. She says, I will give you pleasure and great delight. But I say, I will give you life everlasting. Oh, she cannot offer you peace. She cannot offer you these things. They are not hers. She entices her lovers into thinking she holds these things, but she does not. The harlot is self, the flesh, anything for self. You play the harlot when your heart goes after any substitute for Jesus. Remember this, my son, and guard your heart. Empty yourself of self. Stay humble, broken, empty before me. I will fill you up. I will be your joy, your satisfaction, your everything. Beware of the harlot. She's everywhere, in every window, every door, every street corner. She's in the voice of everyone who speaks. She's boasting, bragging, enticing, flattering, and seductive. Be aware, be aware. The harlot is in the bosom of every man. She rises up and says, I want this or that. Or I want to do this or that. Or I want to be this or that. At all times and in every way she seeks herself. Can you see her in the church? Can you hear her in ministry? Can you see her on the boards and committees in places of high leadership? Can you see her in the pew? Can you see her in the choir? Everywhere she lifts her skirt to dance, her own dance, to the tune she has written in her own invention. And when she has finished, she takes her bows and receives her accolades, her applause, her plagues and trophies. She decks her walls with them. She's the, it's, it's touching the glory of God. <clears throat> it's like the Father said to me, about one of these big, big name preachers. As soon as man start to take the credit for what only God can do in ministry. We have this treasure in the earthen vessel to show that this also passing glory is from God and not of us. The harlot is the counterfeit to my bride who is simply hidden in me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever shall lose his life for my name's sake and the gospel, the same, the same shall save it. The trumpet call is sounding, come out of him, my people. Let us go to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. There we face our idols and cleanse the temple and return to the God of our salvation. <clears throat> 